Hey, what's happening guys? In our last Arduino Foundation series video, we talked about how to use LEDs with the Arduino, how to balance the different colors with different values resistors. So today we're going to take a look at the flip side of that, and that's how to get some input into the Arduino. Again, we'll be using the Arduino Nano, but basically any Arduino is fine. And what we're going to talk about are these guys here, tack switches. I'm sure you've seen them all over in electronic projects. And, yeah, they're really easy to use. They're simply a switch. Couple things to keep in mind. You're going to find out these switches have four legs, okay? They have a set that are spaced widely apart and a set that are spaced narrowly apart. So generally, when you're using these with a breadboard, you want to clip them with the narrow legs on the same side of the breadboard chasm, okay? So that the wide part is spread across the chasm. So, four legs. Which ones do you use? Well, I'm going to show you a trick to make sure that you never screw it up. As long as you put it on one side on one side of the chasm left or right and then the opposite on the other side of the chasm divide whatever you want to call it just make sure you're opposite they can be this way they can be this way doesn't matter but if you hook them up this way you might get a short so just remember, keep them opposite. The other thing to keep in mind is they come in different sizes. This is a 12 by 12 millimeter with a short wide button. This is a 6 by 6 millimeter with a narrower tall button. And you can get them all different sizes, surface mount, through hole, whatever. They are probably, next to resistors, the lowest cost components you can get. So, I figured since you know how to use an LED with the Arduino, we talk about how you can use a tack switch with the Arduino to light an LED. What do you think? Want to learn? All right, here we go. So, we'll start with Arduino on a breadboard. I have the USB interface facing off the right side of the breadboard so we can plug it into the computer. I have our 5 volt pin on the Arduino going to the red rail on the top of the breadboard. And I have the ground pin on the bottom side of the Arduino going to the blue rail on the bottom side. Next we're going to snap in our switch. Just make sure you snap it across the divide, other than that it really doesn't matter too much. Okay. Now, here's, here's what we do. From the red rail, the power, the VCC, I'm going to the left side of the switch on the upper part of the breadboard. Now, from the lower part of the breadboard, I'm going to connect the right side of the switch to digital pin number two. And a lot of the times... That's all you need to do. That'll work. But it's not good practice. Because that pin, digital pin 2 right there, is now floating. What that means is it's not high, it's not low. This digital pin, when we do a digital read, is looking for 5 volts or 0 volts. A 1 or 0. On or off. True or false. That's all at once. Is it something there or not? So if you have some ghostly induced, you know, two volts sitting on that pin, we have absolutely no idea what the Arduino is going to do. So if you want to be sure, in this case, we're going to use a pulled down resistor. I have a 10K resistor here. And we're going to put it on the bottom side of the breadboard in the same column as our pin going to digital pin 2 into ground. So we now have a 10K resistor going from the output side of our switch to ground. Now what's that's going to happen here? 
during normal operations, the Arduino is sitting here, you know, it has its voltages, it's running, it's watching that pin. So if we follow the wire over, that pin is currently grounded. So the Arduino is always going to see a zero on that pin. It's grounded because of that 10K resistor. Now, why did I choose a 10K resistor? Well, that's a bit, you know, it's a medium bit of resistance. So what's going to happen when you press the button, the voltage is going to come across this wire through the switch. And because there is less resistance in this wire going to pin two than there is going to ground, you're not going to short out the switch. You're simply going to energize pin two. Okay? So that's a pull down resistor. When the switch is not pressed, that resistor is pulling that pin down to zero volts. But when you press the switch, it's energized at five volts. All right. So that's that. Next, we need an LED. I'm using the 10 millimeter one. You can use any one you want. And I'm just going to put it across the breadboard divide like so. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'm going to use a 330 ohm current limiting resistor. And I'm going to put it on the cathode of the LED and to the blue row on the bottom side of the breadboard. Then I'm going to connect pin 5 of the Arduino to the anode of the LED. And then we plug it in. And when we press the button. <laughs> and when we press the button for some reason. It doesn't work. What have I done wrong? I don't know. I didn't change anything. Oh, there we go. We just had a bad connection there. So see how it works when I press the button? It lights. What happens if I take out or pull down resistor, do you think the, the LED will light or will it stay off? Well, the answer simply depends on if there's any phantom voltages on the pin. Which you can see there are. So let's take this. This is our connection to pin 2 of the Arduino. And let's ground it. That should put our light out. See? We pulled it down, light goes out. But as soon as we take it off... There's something there. So we'll put that back over here where it goes. And we'll put our pull down resistor back in here where it goes. And now we're back in business. So we're going to go take a look at the code for this on the computer. It's super easy. Um, any questions like, which pin can I put it in? Well, you can put them in whatever pin you want. It's all up to you. And you'll see that over here on the computer. Let's swing over there now. All right, here's our program, which Arduino calls a sketch. It's just a few lines. It's really simple. Now, I don't know if you remember what we talked about before. The Arduino programming is broken up into blocks, okay? So up here, before anything, we have any declarations. And we're declaring one variable here an integer variable, which means it must be a whole number, called tax switch, and we're setting its initial value to zero. And that's simply where we're going to hold the value of that switch, whether it's been pressed or not. Next, we come down to our setup module. And this runs one time at the beginning of every Arduino sketch. This is where you tell the Arduino how its pins will be utilized. So in this case, we're telling it pin two will be an input. Pin 5, where we have our LED, is an output. And then we're going to write pin 5 low so that the LED starts off initially in an off condition. And then we have our loop. This is the main module of the program. This runs over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to say our variable tax switch is equal to a digital read of pin 2, which simply means take a look at pin 2 and see if there's anything there. And it's going to say if tax switch is equal, and pay attention here, when you're 
comparing a value. You need to use two equals in a row. When you're setting a value, use one equal. Keep that in mind. That's an important syntax. Anyway, we're saying if tax switch equals one, is there anything in that holder? If yes, turn on our light. And then we turn it back off when we're done. That's the whole sketch. That's the whole program. It's not hard. We're simply telling it this pin is input. This pin is output. Start off with the light off. Watch the switch. If the switch is on, turn the light on, then turn the light off. So you could say these two sections here are where we set up all the different things the Arduino needs to know so it knows how we want it to behave in this condition. And then this here is your logic. And this line right here is the main line logic of the program if tax switch is equal to one. If you remember what we talked about in the introduction, we said the Arduino simply processes inputs and acts accordingly. And accordingly being however we told it to, which in this case is to turn on an LED. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It's super easy, but if they're fun to play with, you can introduce some delays in there. You could have press the button, the light stays on for 30 seconds, whatever you want. This is just a primer to get you guys going. More to come, as long as you like it. If you did like it, hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons. Couldn't do this without them. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.